some unhappy fans in that away corner today. Not just with you, this has gone on the best part of a decade, really. But what can you say to them? Just to Is there anything that makes you think, OK, there are better days ahead? This was a bad one, but in the future, there is a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. I, I already said, I feel really sorry for them. And in Man United, we have to serve uh, higher standards than what we act today. Eric Ten Hag there speaking with Sky Sports after Manchester United's 4-0 defeat to Brentford. To say that the beginning of this season hasn't gone to plan is a bit of a goddamn understatement. I said that the game against Brighton was the 39th game of last season rather than the first game of something new and that game against Brentford was just... Wow. It was a nightmare. It was a total nightmare. And Eric Ten Hag's response to that has been to cancel the players' day off today and put them through an extra training session, a brutal training session. And I want to see... I don't want to see more of it. Actually, I don't ever want to see it. But I want to do this video because I have can, I will support what Eric Ten Hag is trying to do and what he's trying to change at this club. And that's why I want to speak about that in this video because you know full well throughout the entire preseason, I covered in detail the training sessions that Eric Ten Hag did right from the first ones at Carrington through what we saw all of the preseason tour and how the players were responding to his methods. And because you know, these methods were hard. Geez, after the players have been sitting in the lazy boy chairs for so many years at United, they were struggling with it. But the thing I saw from these players during the preseason was that everybody seemed to be on board with it. Everybody seemed to, but they may not have liked these extra training sessions. They may not have, they may have found it physically and mentally tough, but everybody seemed to be pulling in the same direction. So to have seen that to what we've seen in these first few couple of games here has blown my mind. Maybe not blown my mind, but surprised me and maybe not surprised me. I mean, I don't even know what to think anymore. Sod knows what Eric Ten Hag thinks, but I'll tell you what his response has been. He's taken no shit Simon Stone here from the BBC Eric Ten Hag cancelled Manchester United squads day off after the game against Brentford here from Jason Burt from the Telegraph it's being reported by too many places for it to just be a made up story it's not okay he definitely did it let's scroll through and see exactly what happened and what the concept of it was I think we know what the concept was a furious Eric Ten Hag cancelled a scheduled day off for his Manchester United players and ordered them into training on Sunday Telegraph Sport understands that Ten Hag was back at Carrington on Sunday morning after the squad returned from, Bre from Brentford and his first act was to cancel that day off. Paul Hurst here from the Times running into a bit more detail about exactly what happened during that training session. And yeah, the meticulous nature of Eric Ten Hag, the, the obsessive nature, kind of comes across in what the punishment was. Ten Hag was so furious that he, he cancelled that day off and he made each player run 13.8 collect sorry 13.8 kilometers which was collectively what Brentford ran more than Manchester United in the game on Sunday now this is all child's play we're talking about the Premier League here but what Ten Hag I suppose has learned in these couple of games I think he would have already known but the level of the teams outside of the top six is ridiculous. The competitive nature goes the whole way down to whoever's in a relegation battle, the whole way through up to who's going to win the league. I think he would have been a little bit surprised by that. And that well, that's kind of would have been a given. But at the same time, I do not believe in any way, shape or form that he would have and could have expected what these players have done in these first few games. Kevin Solihull here talking about how Ten Hag was horrified by the performance and made it clear to the players they let everybody down. Non-negotiable non -negotiable that you were prepared to run through brick walls when you play for United. But that last sentence then, I've spoken about this quite a lot of times now. Too many players appear to be afraid to play for United. They do genuinely seem shit scared of making a mistake. And as soon as, that make, as, soon as they make a mistake... It seems to validate something in their head that allows them to crumble in real time on the pitch. And Eric Ten Hag is the man, of course, who is tasked with changing this. And he is trying to change this. Throughout the entire preseason, he tried to change that mentality to make the players think differently, to prepare the players for a harder physical season. 
And instead, the players haven't been able to do it. So what's his response been? Fucking run more. What are you doing? Run more. Work harder. Because what you've done here... I've told you that the... the re <sighs> Honestly, if, to be at this position after two games under Ten Hag is a nightmare. Because I know he's the right man. I absolutely know he's the right manager. I also know that he does not have what he wants and what he needs. And I also know full well, and I stood by it, I stood by everything that he said. Ralph Rannick was not over-exaggerating. It's crystal clear. It's not that difficult. You don't even need glasses to analyze and to see where the problems are. So now it's only about how do we solve them. And for me, it's clear, it's not, it's not, it's not enough to do some little minor uh, amendments, some little issues here and there, some minor cosmetic things. No, this is, in medicine you would see, this is an operation at the open heart. It's mad to think that he was our, literally the last manager we've had, laid everything out on the table, but it's almost like people like, um, I suppose, Jose Mourinho or, or Ralph Radnick or maybe even Nicky Butt, you could say. People that, I suppose, speak out against the club and say, look, what are you doing? That's wrong. And they just get dashed off and away from the club. Of course, it was Eric Ten Hag who played a part of Ralph Radnick not being here because he wanted the control. But if Manchester United have formalised the Ralph Radnick situation prior to the Eric Ten Hag appointment happening... I fully believe that both of them could have worked well together. And of course, that's hypothetical. But I just wanted to do this video ahead of the... For tonight, it's Sunday evening now. The game settled from yesterday. Of course, I was away in Glasgow for a wedding. It's just... It, it cuts deep, I suppose, to see that after two games of this season... We're exactly where we were at the end of last season. We've got a few new faces in, yes, but it's nowhere near enough for what this man needs. Because what this man is trying to do is to change the foundations of the mentality of every one of these players. He's trying to change the foundations of the physical abilities of these players. And what we've seen here in these first two games is one of two things. It's either that these players aren't listening to Eric Ten Hag. And they don't want to adapt to his methods. And I personally don't really feel that's the case. Given what I saw in, in, in the preseason, everything, there was, there, there was a lot of evidence there that sort of supported that everybody was putting in the right direction. Well, everybody apart from Ronaldo, who wants out of the club. And I, I've, I'm not covering that situation until more develops on it. And I will speak about it at some point this week. I'll probably speak about it with tomorrow in the live stream. But it's either that, that, that they don't want to listen and they're not listening. Or the second option, which I think is just the truth. It's just, I don't think they're capable. I just do not think a lot of these players are capable of doing what Eric Ten Hag wants them to do. What Eric Ten Hag needs them to do. What Manchester United need to do to keep up with those teams above us and those teams below. And there are no teams below. We, we, we bought them, I think we bought them in the fucking league. Obviously, there's going to be parallels to what happened with Arsenal and Arteta last season at the start of it and how things started going in the right direction. But I just don't know whether these players... There's, there seems to be this almost suffocating feeling that these players seem to be going through at Old Trafford, geez, at Brentford, everywhere. Like Playing for that United shirt is like a straitjacket for them rather than being something that allows them to take the level up. Everybody's struggling. Every single one of those players are struggling. And I, do, I appreciate the fact that Eric Ten Hag is the manager of Manchester United because it's what you want to see. Again, it sounds bollocks and cliche and it's sort of things you shouldn't be getting excited about. Ah, oh, well done. Your manager's putting players through extra training sessions. What, are you celebrating an under-9s team? Fuck, I'm not even sure under-9s team would play as bad as Manchester United are playing at the moment. But it's what we need to see. We need to see him constantly throughout the season forcing the discipline down the throats of these Manchester United players until they either choke on it or they listen and he doesn't have to do it anymore. Unfortunately, they're being forced it right now. He needs more. We've got 17 days left in this transfer window. 
Unfortunately, there's going to be some damage that has been done to this season now, which is not going to be fixed by signing. Even if De Jong comes in now, even if we sign a, a Sasa Kaladzic, I don't know, you sign a right back as well. It's not going to undo some of the damage that's been done now. But Manchester United have got to make sure in the next 17 days they give this fucking man what he needs. He doesn't have it at the moment. He doesn't have the... the I don't know what can... Ch I'm still... These players have to be better than this. They're not. They have to be. Do they? I don't know. I mean, I've got to start doubting it now. I really do. But I wanted to do this video because I, I want you to let me know in the comments below. Obviously, I did my match reaction. Uh, it wasn't exactly the best one. Uh, it wasn't exactly a positive one. And, yeah, I like to sort of, I suppose, yeah, speak the truth. I appreciate the fact that Ten Hag's cracking the whip. And he cracked the whip all pre-season and they've responded like this. How does, how, how does it change? Honestly, you let me know in the comments, please. How does this change? Well, I know exactly how it changes. I'm going to be doing lots of comp talks talking about the Glazers this week. But I want you to let me know what you think Eric Ten Hag has to be doing himself to get these players not playing like relegation candidates that we are at the moment. That's how we're playing anyway.